Dan Hunt was on top of Skinny Atlas High School. One of the stars of the lacrosse team, and a stud on the gridiron, Hunt never faced an obstacle on the field he couldn't hurdle, figure out, or if worse came to worse, run through. Told you we beat Lafayette. All right. Wow! He regularly will make lists from when he was young of things in his life that he wanted to improve. One of those goals on the list, to play Division I lacrosse. And helping Hunt accomplish that goal was his friend and line mate, Matt Angelillo. I wasn't tremendously close to him in middle school or really even like the beginning years of high school. But it, was, it just seemed like in that one year where, um, where we made that transition to uh, varsity sports or whatnot, uh, we kind of became competitors and then we became line mates on midfield and we both started football and we kind of learned to play with each other a little bit better, which uh, came to be a pretty nice relationship. They had become um, very close during football season the pre that fall and um, during the cross season and working out, we had to do a lot of running, getting ready for the cross and um, worked out with Matt in the weight room and with running and just different things like that. They become, they were almost mentoring each other. I don't know who was mentoring more, but they were very, they were becoming very close knit. Despite being close, on the final day of their junior year, they found themselves in different parts of the country. Dan was playing in a lacrosse tournament in New Jersey, while Matt was in Skinny Atlas celebrating the end of the school year. Unfortunately, the celebrating went too far. We got a call from on a cell phone saying that Matt had been in an accident and was killed. Um, I remember once I got off the phone, um, I ran to my field that I was playing at soon, and uh, my parents were there. Um, I didn't know exactly where they were, so it took me a while. By then, I was in tears. We heard this horrible wail that just kind of stopped everybody, and everybody just kind of turned to look, and it was Danny, and he just came, and he um, threw himself on me, and he just collapsed onto the sidelines and he just said mom I can't believe it how could that happen why would why would this happen to Matt so when I saw him um, I just remember uh, like falling to my knees and my mom getting um, getting on the ground and just holding me so it was, it was pretty rough um, I don't know um, how else to describe it, but just nothing that I'd ever experienced before. It was one of the most painful events of my entire life. Angelillo and his friends had a party on Dave Hall Road. When he finally left, his driver had had too much to drink. Soon after leaving the party, the driver lost control of the car. It flipped several times, skidding on the pavement more than 300 feet. While the two others in the car survived, Angelillo was pronounced dead at the scene. He was... I think kind of almost in shock for the rest of that summer because they had just gone to the prom and they just had a you know great time there and everybody was friends and they were all it was just they were starting these great this great chapter in their lives together that they're going to be seniors in a few weeks. I think uh, you know he struggled with anger over it. Um, he you know saw it as really unfair. I took my mind off a lot of things just by going into the weight room. Um, that was really my one escape that I kind of had from it. Um, I just kind of disassociated myself with people. I didn't go out, I didn't really do anything. I just went to school, did my work, played sports, went home and kind of hung out with my, my family. As the years passed, Hunt's scars were still visible. He left the Rochester Institute of Technology and would eventually find his path to Wells College. But first, he needed to heal. I got an opportunity to go over to Egypt um, after my uh, RIT. And that really opened up my eyes to a lot of things. Like that there's more than one shot at, at getting things perfect. They, that there is time to fix what you've messed up on. I kind of I think that uh, that kind of trip kind of opened up his eyes to um, a bigger world than 
you know, he was part of something bigger than he realized. After his realization in Egypt, Hunt made two pit stops at community colleges. While at Cayuga, he became the all-time leading scorer in school history. He quickly received multiple offers from lower Division I schools, but instead, Hunt decided to go with what was comfortable and head coach Brian Jenkins. Even if comfortable, meant a winless team. Yeah, so he, so he kind of convinced me that would be a good, that would be a good fit. And he's, he's given me advice too, and he's never steered me wrong in anything. And this time was no different. Wells was the perfect destination for Hunt. His accolades may have received more attention at other schools, but Hunt scored more than goals at Wells. He became a leader. I've, I've really grown up. I didn't know what it was like to put in a lot of hard work academically. I didn't know what it was like to um, be accountable necessarily, to have people depend on you, to be um, someone that's worthy of respect all four across field. After the first game, I think they lost something like 21 or 19 to 1. And, I, and we couldn't make it, we were out of town. And we, we asked him after how the game went. He said it went, it went great, we got killed. But boy, these guys play as a team. He goes, probably the best, most exciting moment I've had. And you know, one of the most exciting moments I've had, I was helping a teammate in their shooting. They were a bit of a novice in their shooting skills. And that person was the only one that scored in that game. He said, I couldn't believe how excited I was to see that person score. And I thought to myself, that's, you know, some real maturity that's happening. The maturity came with some bumps and bruises along the way. Four different colleges, a trip to another country, and six years of healing. For Dan to share Matt and the story and for that to make him feel better about it, that's my motto. I believe in that. I believe that when you share your sorrow, your suffering, your loss, your love, um, it makes you real and it makes Dan real. And absolutely, it helps to heal and it does make your load lighter. Hunt still wears those stones he shares every time he walks onto the field. The number nine he dons, that was Angela Lowe's lacrosse number. On his helmet, he etched M.A. on the chin guard and those same initials, M.A., are inked onto his skin forever. Well, because I'm wearing the number nine, I have I have to do these things. Um, if I was wearing a num another number, I could get lazy at some points. I could do something, but I always know that I'm wearing number nine on the field. I always know that that's what I'm trying to live up to. That's what I'm trying to portray. That's uh, the kind of lifestyle I'm trying to live. He's conquered a big disappointment, um, and he's he's a great person for that. And I think he'll succeed because he'll get through anything. Um, he's got the value system in place. You know, he's got the heart. He knows how to share. And he, he he's going to be great. Obviously, there's nothing I can do about the loss of his life. But if one person ever hears me talk about it, I hope that they can kind of start living their life or continue living their life with more direction and just a purpose, opposed to just going through things because you have to go through them.